welcome back. So uh, right now we're going to dive in a little bit into how to do some quick sentiment analysis in R. Now, small note, this assumes that you've already set up your Twitter environment like I showed you in the last video, because um, I'm not gonna go through that process again. It takes a lot of editing to obscure my passwords and stuff like that, so I'm not gonna bother with that. Um, there's also going to be there's some examples of how to use like ggplot and qplot and some other things in here that we're going to talk about. You don't necessarily need to know for this class, but I just thought I'd throw out some new examples of other interesting packages in R that might be useful for analyzing and looking at your data in AI, right? Um, so uh, there's a whole bunch of libraries we're going to use for this, so we're going to pull a bunch of those in. Um, and, you know, you might get some things about following object being masked, right, and stuff like that. That's common when you're starting to play with a lot of this. The other thing is, as I mentioned in the videos, I'm using Jeffrey Breen's uh, sentiment analysis uh, slides that you uh, link, that I link to in the talk. Um, and so they're a great place and I'll put a link to them up on the Moodle as well. Uh, but you know, one thing that, that they did very well, that he did very well, was he put together this little sentiment scoring function. And it's fairly complex and quite honestly, it's a little bit beyond uh, what I'd really like to teach in a one credit class. Um, so I'm just going to kind of give it to you <laughs> and uh, just use it. Um, it essentially is going to go through and do a bunch of things like um, tokenizing, right? Um, so we, we talked about that, right? It's going to do things like removing punctuation, removing control characters. It's going to put it all into lowercase. It's then going to split it up into words, right? And it's going to match those words against positive and negative dictionaries and then sum up that score, right? So it's not it's not doing a whole lot, but you know, it, it is a fairly complex thing. So I just want to kind of give it to you, um, uh, not have to go, not have, you have to work it. It's pretty robust. He did a pretty good job of building it. So I don't anticipate having any problems, but if you do have some problems with it, let me know. Right. Um, and then what we're going to do in this particular example is I'm going to take different keywords related to different topics and we're going to search them on Twitter and then show you how you can analyze them. So for instance, we're going to take Coke and Pepsi just to kind of take two big brands um, and we're going to search for actually their exact mentions at Coca-Cola and at Pepsi. That will mean that people are talking about the brands. Now luckily these brands are unique enough uh, that there won't be a lot of, even if we just search for Coca-Cola, there wouldn't be a lot of off-topic conversation, right? But you can imagine for something like Apple, right? If you search for Apple, there's gonna, probably going to be a lot of conversations about apples that don't involve the company Apple. So you'd probably want to search for at Apple instead. So I always do that by default just to kind of make sure. Um, so we're just going to pull those two searches. Now these are going to take a little while because as I mentioned, they're pulling the data directly. And we're going to talk about what that data looks like once it comes down um, too. So the Coke tweets are down. So I should be able to pull them up over here. Oh, maybe not yet. Maybe it has to finish running until I can actually get access to them. Oh, and of course, um, we're going to need to do all the conversion on them and everything like that. So um, let's look. So the we'll grab the first tweet. Um, by on Coke, right? And if we look at it, right, we get the this particular text. Now we could do the whole Twitter list to data frame, right, to analyze it in more detail, uh, but we don't really need to right now. Uh, we have a lot of the, what we need in here, right? And this is just another way to access it, right? We're getting the first object and just playing around with it. Russ Mix 6, right? Um, is the 56 is the author and it looks like he's just tweeting at a bunch of companies and people i'm not sure what exactly that's doing but you see that occasionally in uh, twitter right um, so what we're going to do with that is we're going to actually now apply to all of them using this list apply function a simple function which is just going to grab the text because in this particular case we're not really worried about who the users are or what they're doing. We just want the text of all the tweets and we're gonna put that all into a corpus, right? So we're gonna grab all those, the, the Coke text and we'll grab all the Pepsi text and convert it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure we remove all the kinds of emojis and things like that because that's gonna throw off our uh, sentiment analysis as well. So that's what this little piece of code does, it says we just replace all the graphics with a, um, a space, right? Just take them out, right? So we'll take out all the graphics and pull those out. 
right? And now we have our Coke tax and our Pepsi, Pepsi tax. And if you look at it, we get the, we can do head Coke tax and we get the first five tweets, right? Um, and in fact, it's interesting. One of the fourth ones is Pepsi versus Coke. Perhaps Pepsi, like Coca-Cola, would donate millions of tests and PPE um, as part of it, right? Um, so now the next step is we're going to grab the sentiment about these tags. And to do that, uh, we're going to use what's called a dictionary-based method. And in a dictionary-based method, we're just comparing each word to a kind of scored sentiment about how positive or negative that word is. Um, and we're going to use this command, get sentiments, uh, to do that, right? And get sentiments um, is, is a, a part of uh, one of the packages that we loaded at the very top. Um, let's see if we can find out more about it just so I can give you some more information. It's tidy text. I thought it was tidy text, but I wasn't sure, right? Um, and it will give you the ability, you can get lexicons like Bing, AFIN, right? Lufron, NRC, these are different sentiment packages, right? So what does a sentiment dictionary look like? It's very simple. It's just a word and a value, a word and a value. So abandon has a score of negative two, right? All the way down to big has a value of one and, um, you know, bothers has a value of negative two, right? So these are all the different kinds of words you might get there. And a the AFIN package is a pretty uh, commonly used one in uh, sentiment analysis. So now, you know, just for curiosity's sake, we're going to grab all the words that have a value greater than zero, and we're going to call those the positive words, and we're going to grab all the words that have a value less than zero. And so again, this is something that's kind of cool. We're taking a, a data frame that we have, right? We're then indexing all the ones that have a value greater than zero and saying we only want those rows and all the things that come after it. And then we're going to just grab the word from it. So this will give us all the positive words and this will give us all the negative words, right? I don't think we've seen this before in this class, but essentially, you know, it's a pretty standard setup. You get your data frame here, right? You've got the, what you want from the data frame where, where a particular value is true here. And then, you know, that's for the row, right? And then you want all the columns. But then we're actually not getting all the columns, we're just getting the word after it. So this is, you know, there's, as, as we say in, in R, you know, there's a many different ways to approach these problems. Um, and so this is gonna grab it this way. We could alternatively just grab the particular column, but a lot of times we don't like doing that because what if somebody changes the structure, right? So there's another column in there. Uh, we still wanna grab the words out of it, right? So uh, we'll grab the positive words and the negative words. And, you know, if you look at these, Right. Um, oh, let's see. I can. I can do it this way. Head, pause. Dot words. Right. There's like the first five positive words. Right. So let's let's show that you know this actually works. Let's just do a little test. So I created three sentences. I love you and you are awesome. I hate this stupid R. It's stupid dumb. Fantastic, unbelievable, which I misspelled on purpose, and amazing. Right. Um, and you know for those right? It's going to run the score sentiment command and it's going to give a two for I love you and you are awesome, right? Negative four for I hate this stupid R, stupid dumb, and fantastic, unbelievable, amazing because it doesn't recognize unbelievable, right? As a word. Um, if I were to change unbelievable to unbelievable, <laughs> right? And rerun this code, um, Oh, it actually goes down to a one. Interesting. I wonder if unbelievable has a, a, a negative uh, value. It might. Um, we can look that up real quick. Let's do that. So um, go to the sentiment dictionary. Scroll down. It's in alphabetical order, luckily. And unbelievable is a negative one. So interesting. So Okay, so now we can go back to the code and kind of explore uh, what's going on with the rest and how we're going to apply this to the um, Coke and Pepsi text, right? So now let's just pull the Coke scores and the Pepsi scores, and we're just going to do that by scoring all the Coke and all the Pepsi text using those positive and negative words, right? And what you see we get is 1,500 observations, right, as the output. So, like, if you look at it, it's just giving you the score for each of those tweets. And, you know, these ones that have a lot of at signs in them, they're not getting anything at all because there's no words that can match. Um, and surprised, you know, this one perhaps Pepsi would like to donate millions, right? That's surprising that that got no negatives, but it might just be because the words are, uh, 
not uh, it's not obvious what the subnet is. Remember, these systems are not the brightest in many of the cases. Um, and so now we're just going to label the brands, right, to Coke and Pepsi, right? Typo there. Um, so we can just give them little tags, and that's going to help with graphing them. And now if we graph the history, the scores, right, um, you can see the distribution of the scores across all tweets. And in many cases in Twitter, most tweets are around zero, and that's what we see here, right, that that's where the vast majority. And it looks like maybe they're slightly more positive than negative for Coke, but um, there's definitely a little bit um, close to the um, uh, extreme for the, the negative, right? Another way we could do this would be to do a Q plot, right? Which kind of gives another graph of this, right? Um, and um, this just kind of is a way we can add uh, additional data, additional ways to graph the data to look at it, maybe in nicer ways. So if you want, I highly recommend taking checking out the ggplot package and the qplot packages. Uh, but um, they're um, but you know, you don't need them for anything we're doing in this class, but they're, they're nice little packages that kind of let you plot things with uh, in nicer and prettier ways in R. Um, so that's it for sentiment analysis in R.